Okay, here we have a older Bonus A machine, and we're going to clean the wheels. It's missing the tensioner, so I'll have to order a new one. Um, it looks like it's missing, uh, well, the tensioner is put on backwards. I don't know exactly what's going on. I think this whole lid's on backwards. That's what's going on. So, got to turn it around. And that happens with some of these machines. People don't understand that the label goes in the front. The tensioner is adjusted from the left to the right. So, our parts are there except for our tensioner. I can order a new one. Um, the belt is off, which is fine because I'm going to take the head off clean underneath this plate. To do that, what I have to do is go under here. Um, you see this is attached to the pedal down here. When you press the pedal, it opens and closes um, these wheels. So you can't open and close these wheels very easily at all by just pulling on this arm. It's Im all, nearly impossible. You can adjust the tension on these wheels with this nut right here. If you move a machine, what you should always do is place something in between these two um, discs so that the wheels don't get chipped. Um, so we're going to take the head off. We're going to unscrew these four screws around the outside of the head. That attaches the head to this metal base plate. Sometimes these metal plates are plastic if they've been replaced. And we're going to unscrew everything and then we're going to put some rust remover on these wheels unscrew this top um, needle plate, take this front disc off, clean under the front disc, uh, make sure that this is clean in here. There's uh, like 10 or 11 little ball bearing pins that are underneath this, so if you lift this wheel up, you don't want to lose those ball bearing pins. And uh, I oiled this up about a week ago, so it's free. It's moving good. It's well lubricated. And uh, so this should be like, look at this. I mean, even right now, the front looper and the looper bar are right on target. So I think we're going to have great results with this little machine. I want to show you my arsenal of goodies. So you always use SAE 40 weight motor oil on uh, fur machine. So I put some in this pump container and I've used that so far to lube the, the inside of the thing. Uh, this is great to blow the dust out of the motor underneath down here because this motor is kind of old. All right, So we'll get all the dust out from underneath there. I'm going to put a little bit of this rust dissolver jelly on the wheels and you only have to leave it on for like a half a minute and it's going to clean up those wheels. I uh, use WD-40 if I want to get some of the other rust off. I don't want to damage this decal, so I'm not going to use anything on that that's very um, strong. Uh, the plate up here, I don't want to damage those either. So I'll probably use just a little bit of light solvent on that. And I don't want to damage that union made uh, emblem on the back either but otherwise I'll take uh, some denatured alcohol put on a paper towel and wipe um, other areas on the parts to kind of get those uh, shined up and you'll see how nice it looks so I released the belt from the wheel and I'm also going to shine this up but the belt if I were going to redo this tabletop, what I would do is I'd cut a slit in the wood between those two belt holes. That way, if you ever have to remove and change a belt, you've got a little bit more flex. Um, this belt has a, it's an adjustable, or it was like cut and clamped. This is an old um, leather belt, and we'll probably replace that either with a leather belt or a um, you know more of a new rubber belt we'll see what happens down here the motor 
that belt goes down and connects and wraps around this pulley. So when I loosened that belt, it loosened it around the pulley down here, which is great. And the motor is driven by this pedal or the acceleration. If you push on that pedal, that engages the motor. And this pedal engages that wheel system and releases the tension on that wheel system. This is, uh, you know, good fabricated table and we're going to reuse the whole the whole thing. I might get this uh, table spray painted or whatever. So the next thing we're going to do is got my screws, drivers, my pliers, and we're going to un unhook this, unscrew those four screws and get started. So I spread the opening on this hook thing so I can slide that off to get the chain um, released. And so just, you know, take that off. This is gonna slide up through this hole right here in the table so I can get that head off. There may be, back here, there may be another hole in the table and that this one doesn't have it but there's a little jar that hangs down that's an oil reservoir jar and that could be located back here and you might have to take that off also um this machine it, I, it's either missing or never had one i'm not quite sure i'll find out when i take the head off so this is a view under that machine so that chain dropped down through that hole was connected with that hook that I put in that cup. I've got a thing to save all my parts. And um, now the whole head is is free. We'll lift it off. We're going to clean underneath this plate and um, unscrew that and then clean under the plate next. So we here, here we have that bottom plate. I've removed the screws that hold the bottom plate to the table. And this is the last screw. So that goes in my cup. And now I'm gonna lift this off and it looks like it's been painted around and that's gonna free that plate. And I couldn't tell you the last time this has been taken off, who knows. But this is gonna get all like wiped off, cleaned. This did not have a hole for the oil reservoir. Um, which usually is like right here. So I'm sure this has probably been taken off every once in a while because the oil that, that comes down through the machine usually goes into that drain hole because this is um, graded on the bottom of this plate so it will drip to that hole. And then that hole is connected to that reservoir bottle I was talking underneath. So this is an old timer machine and it doesn't have that but there's nothing wrong with it. It's just where it's probably had the head taken off more than I realized to keep track of that excess oil. So we're gonna wipe this all up, wipe that all off, and then um, I'll put, I'm gonna put this plate back on once that's all clean. So I think I called this acetone before. It's denatured alcohol. Sorry, I didn't wanna tell you something wrong. So I've taken a little bit of this and I put it in a little bit in this cup and my screws and stuff have been soaking in that to get some of the rust off. I cleaned up the tabletop. This is goes on the very back of the machine and it attaches on the back of the machine like this and it a Kona thread goes on here and that's part of the system to uh, keep the uh, thread going on the machine. So clean that off. Now before I, usually what I do before I put everything back on is I tip the whole table upside down and get everything from that motor all cleaned and look at the wiring. But because I don't know what I'm doing on the wiring and I've got limited time today, I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to go ahead and do that, but that's when, if I were going to change the motor or anything like this on this motor, 
um, I'd check it. I haven't even plugged this in yet. The switch for this machine is right here. It doesn't look it doesn't look real healthy. It doesn't mean that it doesn't work. It's got a bunch of tape on it. But if I were going to sew on this thing, I'd definitely replace the switch before I did any major um, work. So anyway, you kind of get an idea of what's going on down here. But I just take the table and I flip it over on its side and get that all cleaned up um, before I screw the head back on. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this plate and I've got that clean top and bottom. I'm going to set that aside. I'm going to get a piece of cardboard, put a piece of cardboard down here, and now I'm going to start working on cleaning off my head. So, um... It, the oil that I'm going to have will drip on that cardboard underneath here and won't cause such a mess. So I'll be back in a minute. So my screws um, cleaned up pretty well. The flathead are, hold that uh, plate to the table and these threaded metal screws that holds the head to the plate. So, and this was the hook for our chain. Um, and that could be something different that might be on your machine, but that's what held it so I could get that chain off. So I'm going to put those on a different cup, and now we're going to take the top off here. And I'm going to... So I'm going to start with the cover. Um, I lifted it off the machine, and I loosened this right here, and I'm going to pull this off, put that in my little part soap cup, and show you what's underneath this. So the top cover has a bunch of screws and it holds this plate. And that plate, I've never unscrewed one, but I just think what it has is um, the support for that wick. This is a port for oiling. So that's the major oil reservoir area. And I'm sure if I unhook those, all I'd unhook would be like a pad that's probably underneath here that feeds this wick, this wick, and that wick, which matches points on the machine so that when you oil through the main port, it drips down and keeps the, these areas lubricated. So I'm not going to take this off. I don't think there's any sense in it. And uh, we'll go from there next. So I'm using a little bit of this uh, jellied rust remover, and it, you know, it's not real soupy, but it's like that texture. <clears throat> I dabbed a little bit on this top up here with a paintbrush, uh, a little art brush, and a, on this thread guide, and on this one, and you can see it's kind of bubbling, working, and that's going to help clean those up. So it went from looking really dark like that one. And you can see how it's taking off that, uh, it's not necessarily rust, but it's that caked on old oil. And uh, I might try it on this. I'm gonna see what happens. It, that looks more brass. So we'll see, I don't wanna wreck it, but I might try it on there. All right, I'm gonna let that work for a little while and then um, I've got a water bottle. I'm gonna wipe it off and then squirt it with a little bit of water to de make sure it's totally deactivated that chemical in this and uh, see how it looks. Well, I literally wiped that stuff on with a paintbrush on the uh, those two spots and wiped it off as soon as I put it on and I think it shined it up pretty well. I didn't leave it on very long. I've got a little discoloration right there. I think it took a little of the paint off, but not too bad. Um, so use it whatever, but the top is done. I cleaned the back side off. The back side looks good, and I just use that with the denatured alcohol. I didn't put that Rust-Oleum stuff on the back at all. But so my top's done. And except for that post that was right here, that's still soaking. I'll put that in after a little bit. Um, next, we're going to do uh, the outside of the machine. And then I'm going to work 
on some of the stuff that's inside. So this is the back. I shine this up, looks really good. I'm gonna work on these um, ends of these nuts. And this screw right here, that screw is the screw that holds that uh, spool holder on. So this gets attached there. And I just kept having it at the right angle. But that it get, gets attached and then sits on the back of the machine like this. If your machine is missing this, then you're just going to have to buy a regular um, thread holder that comes with a plate and a long hook and use that because uh, you have to have some type of thread holder for your spool. So we're going to keep working on this, but that's that side. That's that side. You know this is an A machine because it's got the nut thing here. And uh, so we're good. B machine has a different assembly and it looks a little different, but this is definitely an A machine. So I got this side shined up. That Union made decal is still pretty good. I didn't do anything more than just wipe that with a little bit of this uh, denatured alcohol. I just used it just a little teeny bit just to wipe it off. Um, the other thing is, you know, if you're doing this, don't pay attention to me, but use rubber gloves. I've got some with, I just don't have them on. <clears throat> Next we're going to do is... We're going to unscrew this screw, and we're going to unscrew this screw, and that is going to take this throat plate right here off, and um, we'll clean that area and those screws, and then I'm going to take this screw off and take that wheel off, but I'm going to do that part first. So here's that housing that I took off, that nose plate, I'm not quite sure what its technical name is. Um, that goes over and covers this gear shaft um, that basically turns this wheel. And uh, so this is going to get cleaned up. It's got some gunk in here. And then this normally has a knob that is threaded on this screw. This screw moves when it's loose moves forward and back, and that is the stitch length regulator. So this little plate will slide off. I'm gonna slide that off, put that in my parts cleaner thing. I'm gonna clean off that um, knob end, and then I'll slide this back on. I have to order a new knob, but I'm gonna oil this slot too. Let's see. Yeah, it hasn't been moved for a while, so it's um, kind of stiff, but it'll loosen up. I can feel it good. All right, so I'm going to do that and clean off, you know, more of this front. Oh, also on your machine, usually around this, this part of the machine, you'll find your serial number. So there's our serial number, and it's stamped in that... Uh, part of the machine usually on on this side so if you were looking for it that's where it would be so we've got this tipped up on the back of the machine on itself and I squirted a bunch of WD-40 just drenched the whole inside I sprayed it from the top down into the cavity down here <clears throat> and you can see it's working good and it's loosening up some of this old uh, oil that's just you know it's just dried on here and so we're just gonna let that work and I'll wipe off things as I go but um, it's just you know clean what you can I have a friend that said what they used to do with these machines was they take the machine head off like this and they'd literally stick the machine head in a five gallon bucket and then pour gas, not gas, but kerosene over it. Well, I don't have, I can't do that. So I'm just trying to 
use that WD-40 to loosen that, you know, old oil and see if I can't somehow um, get this a little fresher on the inside and get that so it it's uh, a little bit better. And I think I'm doing pretty good. So we'll let this sit. I think I'm going to get a fresh piece of uh, cardboard, but when I've got that cardboard, what it does is it, you know, collects what I don't want to get all over the tabletop. And it's easy to slide the machine. I can twist that machine a little easier than uh, if I've got that down there. So we're going to let that WD-40 work for a little while and I'm going to squirt it some more and then we'll come back. So I squirted this WD-40 in here really good again on everything, rotated it by hand, um, the insides, and I'm kind of just going to let that, you know, melt in there and see how it does. I, ro I rotated it frontwards, backwards, and we're just going to, like, see how much that stuff will loosen up. And I think I'm going to get a stiffer paintbrush to go down there and try and wipe off. I can't reach it with my fingers. <clears throat> so what I did next is I loosened this screw. Uh, I'm going to take that off, lift it up, and that screw holds this needle plate on. All right. So that's loose. That's going in my parts cup to soak. Um, it's kind of funny, I notice this still has a broken needle in the um, area right there. So this lifts up, it comes off, and we're going to put this in the little thing here to soak. And these were the ball bearings I was talking about. Um, they're little long tubes, they're about a half an inch tall maybe, and they circulate. They help this wheel. Oh, I can't open that up. Um, I'm going to put a brace here, and then I'll be right back. I want to show you what I did. I took my screwdriver, and this screw right here regulates the tension. And you see that turning? What that does, this is the spring that holds the tension on your arm to keep your discs compressed. So I loosen that quite a bit. You don't want to loosen it too much because otherwise you're going to unscrew the whole screw out of that thing. And I screw screws into this. There's a nut back here inside that uh, spring. So I don't want to lose that. So I unscrewed it quite a bit though. And then I could hand pull, it was hard, but I could hand pull this arm forward and I just put, uh, something in there to keep it spread apart. Usually at, at home I had a little block of wood I put in there, like a big paint stick, levered it forward. So what that does is that's gonna let us access this wheel and see how that slides up and see how smooth that slides up. That's great. That means those um, ball bearings are good. And see how nice this spins? So it's not resting against that back wheel. So that's good news. So when I take this off, I gotta be careful with my hand underneath here that I don't lose any of those little, um, I think there's 12. Two, four, six, eight, 10, yes. 12 of those cylinders. So I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna take and clean up this front disc and wipe off those cylinders so they're ready to go back on. So this is what that front arm looks like with the wheel off. Um, I put the cylinder things in this cup. They're soaking with some other parts. I took that front wheel. I applied a little bit of this uh, Rust-Oleum stuff to it. And that's bubbling top, bottom, brown, all around. Um, and I put some on the bar. And this is the looper up here on the looper nut. I don't want to take that off. I mean, if I don't have to re reposition that looper and it's in the right spot, that's going to be great. 
Um, this looper, if you have to change it, what you do is you come up here, you loosen this nut, it's a threaded nut, your looper slides forward and backward and it will come out. So that lets you change the pitch on your looper or that lets you, you know, remove your looper. What changes the pitch on your looper are these two screws. You have to loosen both of them at the same time. And what that does is it raises and lowers this bar right here that this is all attached into. And then your looper, if it was off and not, see the height of the looper right here according to that wheel? If your looper needed to go up or down, those are the two screws right here that you would loosen to adjust your looper. But I'm not gonna take that off because I have done them and it takes a while to get it readjusted. So if it needs to be adjusted, then I'll take it off. But we'll let this stuff work a little bit. I'm gonna agitate it with my brush, wipe it off. Now, this right here, this little screw, all right, holds this thread guide on that comes down and wraps around. Um, it's got little parts. I don't really have a good magnet here today. I don't want to lose anything, so I'm going to leave that on for right now. But I'm going to work on this a little bit more and then uh, see what happens and how it starts looking. It's going to look pretty good. Just want to show you this area. It's between the top disc right here, top wheel, and this, that little groove, totally caked and corroded with like old junk, all dried up fur. So I took a pin, I've just got my end of my scissors and I'm like gonna get that out of there. I just didn't have a tweezer with me today. Um, the other thing is, is that if you wanted to change the wheel on this back wheel, I've rotated a little bit, so I have to wait till this focuses. Told my phone still. So right here, there is a set screw on that wheel, and there's I think there's more than one. Yep, you can see it right here, right there. I'll take my screwdriver out so we focus. That holds your wheel on to the rear post. And I'm pretty sure you'd have to raise your looper bar, raise your needle bar up um, by loosening those two screws in order to remove that rear disc and change that rear disc out if you ever had to do that. So um, that's where it would be. I think it would just unscrew, lift off, and it probably has the same uh, ball bearings that the front wheel does. So you'd want to make sure you monitor that if you take it off. But I'm pretty sure that's what you'd do if you wanted to change your wheels. What happens with the wheels is eventually over use they'll wear. And then if you look at the edge of this, um, sometimes they get nicks in them. And that ends up being, this one doesn't look too bad. But see how that's cleaned up now? And um, the back one is getting better. I've also cleaned off that needle bar a little bit and a couple of those other parts that are up there. So it's, it's coming along.